Oh, still waking up today. Good morning, good people. Uh, I'm Sean, and today I want to talk like dealing with chaos. Not a very sexy, like, fun <laughs> conversation, but it is one of the like aspects of this job that can make or break the work that you're doing. Um, and how I'm like trying to learn how to manage some of that chaos as a one man band. Um, you know, I, I always have in my head like, oh, it would be so much easier if I had a producer, if I had an assistant director, or if I had somebody to focus solely on electric or uh, like a grip or an electric or, you know, any of these things that if you're in a crew, <laughs> you're fortunate to have. Unfortunately, for most of the jobs that I'm on, uh, I am that sole person. And so all of these responsibilities are on me when I am working. And when you're working with a client, most of the time, they're not thinking about all of these things that need to happen. And that's your job. And as one person, that's like a tall order to fill. Um, <sighs> let's drink. So how do I manage chaos and, and how am I managing chaos and what is what, what, what is the benefit of that? I can guarantee you whatever project you're working on, whatever project you want to work on, whatever thing you're going to pursue, I guarantee you you'll make a plan hopefully and nothing will go to that plan or you know like maybe 85% of the plan will happen and then 15% won't and you'll have to figure out oh my god what do I do for this. Um, I'm gonna walk you through what I'm doing now that kind of gives me a structure to, you know, deal with when shit hits the fan. First thing that I always try to do is like, you know, build a shot list. <laughs> it's simple, it sounds simple, um, but you know, I don't know how you operate, but usually when I'm thinking about a project, I see a list of, you know, things in my head that I, you know, it's more of a montage of, of images, of vibes, of things, metaphors that I want to capture, I want to try to create. And oftentimes they're like elaborate images that would require, I don't know, 3D special effects and uh, scorpion, you know, stabilizer and all that shit. So, I, and obviously I don't have access to that. So, but write them down because those thoughts are important. And if you're recording all of your you know, ideas along in the process, you might have, you know, you, you don't lose them as part of the process. You can go back and say, hey, like, oh my God, we could do this. The next thing I feel kind of hit or miss about, but try to create like a storyboard. Um, depending on the type of work that can be hard. And if you're, you know, trying to get funding for your film or you're trying to fill out a, you know, a grant application or anything like that, go through that RFP process. <laughs> then yeah, you're gonna need a storyboard, you're probably gonna need a treatment, proof of concept, trailer, all that stuff. But if you're just working, you know, as a solo person on a project and the project's paid for by the client and somebody asks you, hey, I want to, can you make me this video? You know, storyboards can help you figure out what, the, you know, the sequence of things that you want to include and can kind of help you take that shot list that you had and flush it out more into the arc of the story or and i've had this happen to me before they can put you in a box and then you know you kind of think oh my god well it's not a part of the storyboard so I, I i shouldn't do that so that's why i preface that by saying if it works for you then that's that's great if it doesn't you know use it as it makes sense now this is this is like the life of luxury um and i say that because well I mean, it shouldn't be the life of luxury, but unfortunately, sometimes it is. Try to scout your location. Um, the more and more I get into this kind of work, the more I realize it's less about the camera you own, it's less about the equipment you own, and it's all about location, logistics, and access. 
Um, I'll get to access in a bit. But logistics, like, your location can make or break you. I have a shoot later this week, and the location is just horrid. No natural light, uh, terrible carpet, very cramped feeling space, and I have about three hours from start to finish to set the whole thing up, get three interviews, get all the B-roll that I need, um, and um, it's it's a very tight, you know, deadline. And thankfully. I'm coming into this space knowing what it looks like ahead of time because if I didn't, then I wouldn't have this kind of plan in place. And who knows if the plan's gonna work, but at least I kind of have an idea of, okay, what do I need? If I was arriving to set and I was discovering that this was what I was working with on day one, I might not know what equipment I need to bring. I might not have thought through in my head how to light the space. And giving yourself as much breath to kind of problem solve those things so that you can go and set the place up and then focus on like coordinating all the other things that are gonna happen. Like, especially if you're a one man person, you've gotta make sure that your interviewees know what's going on. You've gotta make sure that everybody on set knows what's going on. You have to like literally run the whole show. Um, and so trying to figure out and test lights on set and, and kind of try to map out what kind of look you want on top of all of that is just gonna make you rip your hair out. So to the best of your ability, you know, try to visit your, these locations. And if it's possible, try to pick your locations, fight for it. <laughs> because your location will make or break. Location helps you tell story. It's gonna affect how the light, the cinematography creates depth across, you know, wherever it is you're shooting. Like all of these things, if you're in a flat, ugly space, it doesn't matter how you light it. It doesn't matter what equipment you have. Like it's still a flat, dirty space. <laughs> you know what I mean? As much as you can delegate some of these you know, logistic management tasks to the client or to whoever it is you're working on so that you can focus on, you know, making a nice product. Do that, do it. Uh, and and I know the impulse is, and I feel this impulse very strongly is, God, don't give it to the client, they're gonna mess it up. But you have to take a breath and you have to say, okay, look, I, I am a single person, I cannot do everything. And there are certain aspects to the production that I don't necessarily need to be involved with. Ma managing people's schedules, contacting, emailing, all of that stuff, like I don't necessarily need to be a part of that. CC me on it, but keep that correspondence between the client and whoever they hold the relationship with. The last thing is access. And this isn't so much about like managing chaos as much as it is like making that chaos seem fulfilling. Um, and when I say access, I mean access over your subject. Their time is one thing, and their availability uh, and schedule and their willingness to be a part of it. Now, if you're, you know, again, if you're part of a production and you're like paying actors, that's different because that pay is an incentive. But if you're working in Docker, if you're working in, you know, at, for some sort of campaign and, and, and the client is bringing in everyday people to be a part of that process, then, you know, some, some folks might think, okay, I'm just, you know, coming in for 30 minutes to do an interview. As best as you can, try to push for greater access. Greater access into their lives, into the activities. It's gonna give you more interesting, more accurate things to shoot rather than, you know, in some cases, shooting in a parking lot outside the building. Like, don't do that. You are getting a good product. You are taking, you are taking time out of their day, so might as well make it worth it. And um, I think you know it doesn't have to be all day that you're following them, but having certain different locations, locations that make sense, that build context, that kind of wrap all these other logistical things together to help tell a story is what's going to help you. And it's it's going to save you brain space. It's going to save you mind. So. Um, I think they're all worthy and I think this is a great way of managing that chaos and making sure that the chaos seems like it's important and um, is, is worth it at the end. 
So that's gonna wrap it up for me today. I just, it's a busy week for me and I have a couple of these thoughts where I'm just thinking out loud about this kind of thing. And um, some of this is reflecting on my own process and some of this is like stuff that I've kind of been thinking about for a while. So I hope it's useful for you. Um, feel free, uh, feel free to send me your thoughts on what your process is like. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, it helps me and I'm, I'm, you know, we're making our way up to a thousand, so once we get there, I'll make probably a special video on uh, getting there, and um, I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys and, and, and the small little community that we have here, of, you know, people who are kind of coming into this craft. So, uh, thank you so much, and hope your week is going well. All right, bye.